Our friendship carry uh, the eternal debate, crunchy or chunky, whatever, smooth it. or chippy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, hey, <laughs> Chip, good morning, man. Thanks for joining us. By the way, did that settle? Did that conversation ever settle? Yeah, Brad Thompson's full of it. He's wrong. It's not, it's creamy's gross. It's crunchy, not chunky. I'm chunky. The peanut butter's crunchy. Crunchy peanut butter's the only way to go. Thompson's a funny dude, by the way. That's a sneaky, oh, yeah. funny guy. Chip's uh, you, funny. Yeah, you guys are a fun listen. A uh, Chip, good after right there. many years in this industry, moving to St. Louis to uh, go Mike's side with the Cardinals for 2023, and you got there during that one weird year in franchise history, Chip, where they weren't as good as they almost always are, but it appears nobody's resting on their, la their laurels there. They have been very active this free agent season. Yeah, Maddie, I got a little tired in uh, July and August of saying, hey, don't blame the new guy. <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> or, or forget, depending on your perspective. But, yeah, it was an uncharacteristically bad year for the Cardinals. And you're right. Uh, John Mosellock last August said the offseason goal for the Cardinals is going to be pitching, pitching, pitching. And here over the last two weeks, he's done exactly that. Uh, Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn, and now, of course, Sonny Gray, who at the moment is at the top of the rotation. Uh, it was a necessary move for the Cardinals. Uh, they were next to last, I think, in strikeouts by their starting staff. They had fewer than 50 quality starts as a group last year. Think about that. You had over 100 starts that were not quality. That's how you lose 91 games last year. And uh, obviously, innings were a problem for St. Louis, too, and they think that they've addressed that as well. So uh, hats off to John Mosellock. He's been taking a lot of heat as to how he was going to fix this rotation. He's gone about doing that. I'm not sure that they're done with that regard. They've got a bullpen to uh, upgrade as well, need a batter to as well for the bench and maybe in one of the outfield spots. But so far, so good for the Cardinals. There's a lot to be excited about as we look forward to the uh, general manager's meetings. We're calling this edition of the show, Chip, Cardinals in Cars, because earlier this morning <laughs> we visited with Sonny Gray. We just want you to take a look at Sonny, very relaxed, wearing what looked like a Seattle Mariners pullover with the leg up and the shorts earlier today. What do you got? Uh, his car's a lot nicer than mine. I can promise you that. Look at that. <laughs> I just have regular leather. He's got Corinthian leather with a new deal. Why not go with the uh, go with the classy the, look? The Corinthian leather. Yeah. Remember that commercial? Yeah. Hey, uh, Chip. You know, going back home. I mean, you're back home in St. Louis. When when you started thinking about childhood and watching Cardinal games and going through that that almanac, so to speak. Uh, as you're getting ready for games, how, 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 how shocking and daunting was that for you when you first started doing that? Yeah, believe it or not, Harold, it was. I grew up in St. Louis, and uh, I was a kid that listened to Jack Buck and Bob Starr and Jay Randolph on the uh, transistor radio. Mike Shannon, of course, uh, with the far-flung signal of Camo X Radio. And I think you guys know, you've done play-by-play uh, -play and, and analysis on TV. We stand on the shoulders of giants, and when you sit in that chair and you think of the names that have occupied that position, you can't help but think, wow, this is a really, really big deal. And to do it for a franchise that I grew up idolizing and loving as a kid growing up in the suburbs in St. Louis, uh, that was really a thrill as well, as was opening day. This year at age 58 was the first time I got to see opening day in person with the Cardinals. And I got to tell you, when the Hall of Famers came out of the convertibles in the red jackets and when the Clydesdales came marching across the warning track and made their way around the stadium and everybody in the ballpark on that beautiful uh, April afternoon were standing and clapping and cheering and crying because the start of a new baseball season was upon us. Yeah, the old uh, the, the hair on the back of the neck moment was certainly for me and for my family that was there too. So uh, it was a great, great moment personally. Uh, it was a fun day against Toronto. Unfortunately, there weren't as many of those as we would like in 2023, but we're all very optimistic for a better 2024 season. Hey, so, you know, we always talk about um... – we, we have ball players whose dads played and everything else. You go, oh, the pressure living up to it. Talk about pressure. Grandpa, your dad, the family lineage of, of broadcasting. Why did you go into it? Did they ever tell you, don't do this, young man, don't do it? Well, if you've spent any time with me, as much time as Maddie and I have spent together, he could answer this for you. I'm not smart enough to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what I loved. I mean, look, all of us who, who are 
all been broadcasting, wanted to be players. Ted Simmons was my guy in St. Louis. I was a catcher. Uh, I, I dreamed of being a major league player. I was nowhere near good enough to even play high school baseball. But that was the dream. And then I realized pretty quickly, well, if you can't do that, what's the next best thing? Well, my dad and grandfather were doing games on cable TV. And growing up in the suburbs in St. Louis in the early 80s, when cable TV started its penetration, uh, I came from a divorced family. Uh, I got to see my dad and grandfather on TV after school and late at night. And that's sort of where the, 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 the candle was lit, I, I would say. And then spending more time with my dad in the summer uh, was really when, when the bug bit me. But they, they said, do whatever you want to do and be happy. If you want to be a broadcaster, we'll help you any way we can. Yeah, but you, you got to have the pipes. You got to have the voice. When did you know you, you had the voice? Uh, well, you, it's, it's really more passion than anything else, Harold. I think you really have to love it. And that's what I think we love about baseball, right? Not everybody's 6'7", 280 pounds like Aaron Judge. There are guys like Jose Altuve who can star. You don't have to have a great voice or any of that stuff. You just have to have passion and care and be a good teammate. And luckily, I think that uh, those are the lessons I really learned from my dad and my grandfather. And hopefully I'll, I'll carry those on to my twin sons who are broadcasting now as well in double A with Amarillo. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. cool. That's yeah. so and cool. Out of them. Yeah. Hey, Chip, circling back to the Cardinals for a sec here. Do you yeah. expect because there's so many outfielders there, right? And they're. For the past year or so, we've heard, oh, Cardinals have a surplus out there. They could make a move. They're loaded for making some kind of trade. Now that they've addressed, in large part, the starting pitching deficiencies, uh, do you expect them to be active in the trade market? Read the tea leaves for us. I, I think that's a, gr a great possibility, Matt. I, I think, you know, if the Cardinals have had a great offseason already. You want to make it a really great offseason, go get one more guy at the top of the rotation. I don't know if the dollars are there to do that in free agency, but as you mentioned, with the dearth of position players that are apparently out there in free agency, the Cardinals have a lot of really talented skill players offensively that they could potentially move. They also have a lot of redundancy. And I think last year, if you want to take uh, positives out of a uh, 91 loss season, they found out who's the best fit and maybe who isn't the best fit for the style of play they want to employ going forward and with that in mind yeah they have some players that I think would be very attractive to other teams and the Cardinals as you know with Goldschmidt and Arenado have done a really good job of acquiring great players from players within their depth of, of uh, major league and minor league talent and I think that's where Mo and his staff are really going to shine coming up here as I said at the uh, winter meetings. Hey was there a game or a series last year that stood out for you where you look back and go man that was really fun to be a part of? Um, well, anytime you play the Cubs is fun, right? It's fun getting booed when I go to Wrigley Field now. They used to cheer me. Now they boo me. <laughs> Uh, going to Atlanta, taking two out of three from the Braves was somewhat satisfying. I got to admit that. Um, the first series against uh, Toronto, uh, that was a wild offensive series. Three great games, a lot of young players, a lot of young talent. And just to sort of get my feet wet with my teammates, Brad Thompson and Jim Edmonds and our great Valley Midwest crew was uh, really, really fun. I, I just can't say it enough. I'm so humbled by the, uh, the warm welcome I and my family have received. And as I said, 91 losses we made it through uh, without making any Anybody mad hopefully we'll celebrate 91 wins or more for the next several years in st louis and really have a lot of fun way to go chipper good to see you man uh thanks hey, for coming on the program we'll see you soon you got it happy holidays to you and your family